Okay, cool. Um, so hi everyone, my name is uh, Michael Moshe Michalashvili. Uh, feel free to call me Moshe or Michael, it's uh, your call. And I'm going to talk about a project I've been working on two years ago uh, during my uh, master's degree under the supervision of uh, Professor uh, Leo Wolf. And it's about uh, the idea, the main idea is uh, music generation or instrument uh, music generation. And, uh, and the title is Hierarchical Timber Painting and Articulation Generation. Um, so the main motivation, as I said, is about uh, music generation. The idea is to get um, some input signals or features that would represent how we would like to have some uh, musical piece played uh, by a monophonic uh, instrument, let it be, I don't know, saxophone, clarinet, um, trombone, violin, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the idea, I mean, the goal of this project, the main motivation is to be able to generate music given some basic features uh, we give to the model. And let's talk a little bit about those features. Uh, so the input signals uh, we're giving to the models are pitch and loudness. So the idea is that, oh yeah, something that I didn't mention, um, the network is trained on music generation. And at the end, we want to generate, as I said, monophonic uh, um, uh, pieces of uh, musical instruments. Uh, but another, uh, I think, uh, fun and uh, uh, byproduct by, uh, by of this uh, architecture uh, choosing is to be able to have a timber transfer. So the idea is to be able to get a recording of one uh, instrument and play it using another instrument. That's why the signals we choose were uh, pitch and loudness because they are quite uh, general or generic in a sense. I mean, most of the instruments uh, uh, have distinctive pitch and loudness is a really common uh, feature uh, in audio in general. Uh, so for good timber transfer, we need features to be disentangled from the source. So in a way, it's not 100% correct. I mean, there is some entanglement between, let's say, pitch patterns and some loudness patterns to instruments. But in, in general speaking, it works quite well. So this is one reason we chose those signals um, to pro and provide them to the model for uh, generating a uh, sound. Um, and the other reason is that they provide enough, enough information from the user uh, to reduce the disambiguity uh, for the model. And we'll talk a little bit later about how exactly we provide those signals to the model or how we calculate them. And let's talk a little bit about the generation process. So usually in the generation, in generation process in general, we have the condition features, uh, let it be audio generation, speed generation, image generation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we have a network that gets the inputs and generates the output. And usually we use one network for the whole process. Uh, what we decided to do in this work, in this work uh, is to separate, I mean, to give some kind of a relaxation to the generation process. So instead of having one shot uh, generating the audio from the input pro uh, from the input uh, features, we have some cascade of networks, I would call it, as I said, the uh, generation relaxation. So we have the first phase, which is called in our uh, paper, the articulation phase. So the idea is that on the first phase, we generate uh, low, uh, I mean, the sample we wish to generate, but in a low sample rate, I mean, in low frequency, let's say the final output would be 16 kilohertz. So the first state would generate audio in 2000 hertz. And so the idea is like to separate the stages of generating the audio we wish to have and finding it by cascade of hierarchical timber painting. So we call it timber painting because on every stage of the generation, we add more details and timber details. 
uh, to the musical piece. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the progressive generation. Um, I think, I'm not sure if it was the first time a progressive generation was used, but I think this is maybe one of the most famous uh, papers was uh, the state of the art for a face generation back in the day, uh, four years ago, which is, I know, ages in uh, deep learning terms, but uh, still worked quite well. I mean, people were struggling to generate uh, high resolution images. And the idea behind this paper was to generate uh, the images in a step-by-step -step, uh, notion. So we also have here a generation of low resolution and low frequency, like we have the special frequency of the images. So first we generate the, the basic template of the image, and then we add more and more details as training goes by. So it kind of resembles uh, what we tried to do, what we tried to do for music. Um, so let me, before I delve into the architecture part and um, speaking technical, I'll just uh, let you listen to them to some samples. Uh, so as I said in the in the training phase, what we want to do is to reconstruct the input uh, a tune, a reference tune. So here we have a saxophone example. Please let me know if there is any problem uh, with the audio. I think it should work but if not we'll fix it so this is an, a sample of the input uh, audio and here uh, is the pitch representation we provide to the model so instead of using um, the numeric sequence of the pitch values uh, we decided to give the model i mean it's kind of a wave uh, shaping model in a way because what we provide the model on the first stage instead of the instead of the frequency list is the sine excitation of those frequencies and it sounds a bit like this so here we have we, we can actually hear the melody of the original signal but it's again a sign a signal not very informative uh, so let's listen to the first phase of the articulation so the articulation is taking the sign and adapting it to the target instrument so in this case we have a saxophone let's listen to the two killer saxophone generated And here we already have, um, we can recognize this is a saxophone, it's still a bit muffled, uh, not fully expressive as the input sound, but we can already say this is a saxophone. Um, it's also worth to pay attention to those gaps between the notes. I mean, this is exactly the, the articulation phase. And, and later on, we'll see in the presentation that different instruments might have different um, uh, notes progression or like the gaps between the notes uh, might sound different. Uh, so the next stage uh, is the hierarchical timber painting. So on every stage of the generation process, we generate the um, higher resolution audio, uh, providing it with the previous one. So let's listen to the four kilohertz. Here is the eight kilohertz. And the final output. So here we already have the full resolution and sounds pretty good. Uh, quite resembles the the input signal we try to reconstruct. And that's basically how the generation process looks. So we have the input signal, uh, we extract the pitch and loudness from it, provide those, this information to the network. Uh, here we can see only the pitch signal and then generate it step by step until we get to the final frequency. Um, 
So let's speak a little bit about the architecture. I'm terribly sorry about this horrible uh, painting or uh, image, but I think it sums up quite well what we did in the work. Uh, so let's start from the feature extraction. So on the first stage, we have uh, feature uh, we have the pitch extraction. We extract the pitch uh, from the signal using the prep uh, pitch extraction model, and we denote it as uh, F zero. After the after that, it uh, goes through the sign excitation process, as I said, uh, described here as eta, and the input goes and um. Sorry. So as I said, uh, it goes to the generation network. The generation network is a feed forward, feed forward uh, uh, wavelet. And as I said, instead of like most of the generation processes, uh, uh, usually, I mean, in some papers, uh, a noise signal is provided to the generation, and all the and all the features are provided in the condition. Here, instead of providing uh, random noise, we use the sign excitation as an input to the model. And as a condition feature, we extract the loudness from the low resolution uh, signal. And the numbers denote the, the resolution step, the process. So X0 is the first signal in the lowest resolution and Xn is in the, fi the, the final output or the final signal we wish to have. And, oh, sorry. Um so uh, it gets stuck just a second. So much technology here. What? No. I'm stopping the share for a second just to fix it. Sorry for the technical issues. I hope I'll solve it in a minute. Slides. Okay, I think we're back. So let me bring back the share. Sorry about that. Sometime Google Chrome just decided to troll you. And this is the first stage, as I said. And this is the loudness uh, signal we provide to the network. And the next phase is generating the signal, getting the first uh, resolution signal, and upsampling it to the next target uh, sample rate. So this goes on and on until we get to the final stage which is the final input, uh, the final output, sorry. And let's talk a little bit about the losses. We have uh, ne the next slide, I think, talks more about the losses, but I'll just present them. So we have uh, three losses training for training this network on each, on each stage. I mean, so each stage trains with these three losses. And the first loss is the multi-resolution spectral loss, uh, which serves as a is the more most basic reconstruction. Uh, we have the uh, frequency, time frequency representation of the target, and we wish to resemble to the target uh, given the, those different frequencies, uh, pretty common in uh, audio generation. And we need to have some more losses because this loss mainly penalizes the uh, frequency uh, part in the in the signal, but not really the phase. And since we have we don't have uh, explicit loss for the phase, uh, we do have some implicit losses for the phase. Let's for also using multi-resolution spectral loss is a bit constrained about the phase because if we want to the signal to be coherent in many uh, resolution, it can in many resolutions and not only one. Um, the audio has to uh, the network, sorry, has to learn a better notion about the signal, but we also have 
the adversary the adversarial loss. So we want uh, the output to be um, as similar as the distribution of the original uh, inputs. So we want we train a discriminator, and, and the duty of the discriminator is to decide whether a generated signal is fake or real. Uh, given the real distributions of signals and training on the fake distribution of the generator. So we have the adversarial, adversarial training here. And we also have the perceptual loss. The perceptual loss um, is another reconstruction loss uh, using a pre-trained pre network um, that has uh, features which are um, correlative to auditory perception. Um, specifically pitch. Here we use the CREP uh, network as we used. The same one used as feature extractor is also used as a perceptual loss. We ask the model to provide, uh, we ask the model that the output features of the generated sample would be as close as possible to the uh, features extracted from the original signal. So as I said, here are the losses. And the training uh, paradigm is pretty much following the parallel wave and setup where we have a generator and discriminator. Um, the main difference uh, architecture wise is using uh, the sign excitation as an input instead of a random noise. Uh, each stage of the training, okay, actually, I'll talk about it uh, on the next slide. And the crop loss is using the output of the fifth block as in the DSP paper. Uh, by the way, a really cool paper, one of my favorites. Uh, I'm sure we you already discussed it in the on this uh, group. Uh, okay, so the training process. Uh, the training process, uh, we trained each model on a single instrument, which means every model, I mean, Every model is for a single instrument. Uh, the instruments and the recordings were taken from the URMP dataset. And a few tricks uh, for uh, getting uh, good results uh, using the low resolution models as, in, as initialization to the next uh, stage instead of using uh, random weights uh, improved the model, mainly made a conversion, converges, uh, the converge result. Uh, better and did it faster. So this is a tip uh, I could give in uh, hierarchical generation, at least for this uh, uh, work. Uh, about weighting, uh, using the uh, same uh, weight for all the losses, for all loss components, uh, play the guessing game to decide uh, which instrument is described by which uh, uh, log uh, spectrogram. So let's listen to the input. And here all, so this, this was the input uh, for the feature extraction stage and the, the rest are generations of different models for different instruments. So let's listen to the first one. So this, this was a conversion to a saxophone. And this is actually the trumpet, so it's kind of reconstruction. And let's listen to those samples as well. So that was the cello and the last one here. The last one was a violin. And I have two more samples that I really like um, because it's converting from singing, actually, and not from 
um, musical instrument. Well, you can say the vocal tract is a musical instrument, but I wouldn't get into that. Um, She's cool as ice. She'd more than make a man of me. Or to a saxophone, I think. And this is the last sample that I sent to all of my friends when I just started to get good results with this network. was the trumpet and this is the violin um, okay so the main takeaways uh, from this work uh, so it's high fidelity audio generation uh, but using quite uh, low computational and memory footprint uh, the models are quite small I think it's one uh, 1.4 million parameters per uh, hierarchy stage uh, it converges pretty fast I mean each stage needs a few hours at most less than a day on um, reasonable GPU uh, nowadays I mean this work was uh, done two years ago uh, the resources nowadays are much better so I guess it's even gonna be quicker. Uh, little data resources are needed, which is quite cool. And I think the idea, the, re the main reason for that is that we have a good representation for the network, but also working with this explicit uh, breakdown of what the network should do in every stage kind of helps it. So it doesn't need too much samples to train and provide uh, reasonable results. And the main ideas, uh, one of the uh, main ideas in this work is using uh, basic auditory components because it helps us and enables us to uh, perform timber transfer. So, I mean, this is probably quite generic uh, saying, but if we want to have a uh, domain transfer uh, using networks, we, we need to have the input features as much as this entangled as possible. And potential improvements for the network uh, support uh, polyphonic generation. Uh, one of the uh, pitfalls of the current method is that we can provide, uh, I mean, we can generate only uh, monophonic uh, uh, instruments because we provide the single melody of this monophonic instrument. Um, it would be interesting to try and provide uh, various uh, pitch signals, but then again, we need to have an extractor, a pitch extractor that knows how to handle a uh, few melodies uh, or trying to train uh, maybe more universal, maybe a generic audio representation as was done in a, a universal music uh, conversion, for example, uh, having a better hierarchy control. So this work uh, is quite explicit. I mean, in the way we control the hierarchy and the generation of the audio. And nowadays we have a few really exciting works, in my opinion, uh, for audio and video generation and, and image generation, sorry, also video, uh, that also have, in a way, this hierarchical uh, generation method but it's done i think in a more elegant way and um, instead of generating in two networks it's putting the condition on the hierarchy inside the network itself uh, one famous example is a uh, style free or uh, alias freegan where they generate uh, images from a uh, given noise and they have uh, uh, frequency constraints on each uh, stage on the generation and implemented inside the model uh, which is quite cool they also a paper was published 
I think one month ago, uh, Big Vegan doing the same in audio, and I'm really excited, excited about the results and hope they're going to publish the code soon. And another thing that can uh, improve this work is uh, instrument conditioning, uh, like doing all in one network instead of one network for each instrument. I believe it's going to improve the conversions because the network will have to deal with all those instruments and know how to generate them all. So it will learn some kind of a more uh, generic representation of audio. And a potential improvement, which is quite uh, um, uh, easy, is to uh, use a better network backbone. I mean, uh, parallel wavegun was the maybe the state of the art of uh, audio generation uh, back in uh, 2020, but nowadays we have uh, iFi gun or uh, as I said, the big vegan and make better networks for generate even uh, higher fidelity audio. So I think it would be interesting to test this uh, using those uh, better uh, networks. Uh, the code is available on GitHub. I don't really like, I don't add new features, but it's supposed to work. And if it doesn't, please let me know. Um, you also have a call of the uh, and um, a notebook, which is kind of nice because you don't have to um, download the code and you know uh, play it on your, on your computer. You can just do it uh, here on the website. Uh, I, me personally, I spend too much time uh, singing uh, 70s uh, Israeli rock music to the website and trying to hear how the sound as a violin. Uh, recommended. And that's it, I think. Uh, I would love to thank uh, Guy Aris and Adam Polia for their helpful discussion, and also thank the European uh, Research Council for their uh, support, uh, uh, for their financial support in this project.